I know we've got a lot of competition. Um, my name is Sandy Modisett and I work for the uh, County of DuPage in Illinois. It's a large county, about a million people, just straight west of Chicago Cook County. So we've got a lot of uh, large towns. Uh, most of our county is built up. We have a few unincorporated areas, but largely everything is covered by towns. Uh, I'm the web services manager in our IT department at the county, and I have, uh, there's five web developers, including myself, of the team. So, give me a show of hands of how many people have experience with WordPress already. Anybody? Okay, some of you do. Um, hopefully this won't be a repeat of anything you've experienced. Um, we, I'm going to cover why, why we selected WordPress for some of our projects. Uh, we go through the theme selection process that we went through. Uh, CSS is something that you'll use if you want to customize any of the themes that you purchase. I'm going to cover widgets, plugins, managing the database, and securing your Word site, WordPress site. So why WordPress for us? Our county site is under the Ektron CMS, so it, that wasn't an, an issue at the time, but we had a number of small sites that we needed to redo that had been around. Uh, largely, they were the nonprofit arms for our animal control, our convalescent center foundation, and we also, there was a new project that came up where they wanted to create a new website for heroin, heroin awareness. I don't know how many of you are having problems with that in your, in your uh, communities, but it was becoming a big issue in DuPage. So they wanted to create a new website, and we said, well, we don't have any graphic designers on staff. We have web developers who can manipulate graphics and things, and we can make something look okay, but we don't have design skills themselves. So we decided to go with WordPress largely because of that. Uh, it was a quick way to get a design done without a lot of money. You know, and of course, as many of you in government know, there's usually no budget. We want a website, and we don't have time to go out for bid, and you know, hire somebody to do the design. For the county website, there is, but not for these smaller sites. So that was a, a good part of it. We also wanted a content management system of some type because we wanted these smaller organizations to manage their own content. And of course, the speed. So when we went to, to pick uh, themes, we wanted something that was real flexible. And if you've ever looked for a theme, there's some that have a, a smaller back-end admin. Some of them have pretty robust ones. And we've even learned some things as we've moved along. So we wanted some options for headers and footers without having to do a whole lot of programming or customizing, slideshows, options for changing elements, and something, some way to do custom CSS easily. Some of the themes actually have right in the administrative back end, a place where you can enter your custom CSS. Some of them are a little bit more involved to add custom CSS. So we wanted things that uh, would make it easy to build. Some of the themes have page builders. Fusion Builder and Visual Composer are two of the ones we've seen. And I'll show you some of the examples of what that looks like. Yes? Um, the question was, where do the themes come from? Usually what you do is you build a WordPress site and then you have to either purchase or build a theme. Um, and I'll tell you where we got ours. Um, so th the other thing is it's nice to have some built-in elements like, you know, flip boxes and circles and different things that we wanted. So we tried to find some of those elements in the themes. And we wanted it to be responsive, and there are a lot of responsive themes out there now. I definitely wouldn't recommend, obviously, getting something that wasn't responsive to start with. And even though they say it's responsive, you know, you always want to test it. And if you want to really see how pleased the customers are for that theme, look at the, the comments that people make and, and questions that they have. Um, the other thing that 
that we found useful is reusing a theme. I had had this experience in my personal life because I had built a site for, uh, I don't know, how many of us do web on the side <laughs> outside of the, your job? So I had done a, a site for somebody and then our subdivision needed a new website for our, for our homeowners association. So I used the same theme and could get, I got it done in a day. It didn't look anything like the other one, but I could get it done quickly. So re reuse of themes can happen. And you do have to buy each one. You can't just buy it once. They have packages where you can like buy for a lot, but it, you pay big bucks for that. Most of the themes cost under $100. So when you reuse a theme, you do have to buy it each time. But you, you understand how it works and you understand everything that's in it. Right. Once you get to know a theme and you understand how they're administrated, where, where you go for things to change certain elements. It just makes it a lot quicker to, to implement another site in it. And then in WordPress, you can add those elements that make it individual from the other items that you, uh, other sites you created in that theme. Um, well, most of the, the elements that you add are built into the theme. There's also plugins, which I'll be covering. So if there's a, an element that you want that isn't in your theme, more than likely there's a plug-in that you can add and do that. So, so these are the, the websites that we created. We started off with our Heroin to Page site. I'll show you a glimpse of all of them in 2014, in early 2014. And this was the first one that we, will, uh, that we created and we had to do it in a short time frame, of course, because they had this communications project that they were going to communicate to people and they wanted the website up. So we worked with uh, Public Defender, our communications office, and a number of people to, to uh, create that heroin site. And for that one we selected the Legenda theme and I just provided links to the themes but the other ones are just the URLs. Then we, uh, a little while later, we wanted to redo one of the um, the, this is the nonprofit. The DPCC Foundation is our, uh, is our nonprofit arm of our convalescent center. So they raise money for the people in the convalescent center, you know, to have some extra things that they couldn't get otherwise. So we selected a Mercy Corps, which was a nonprofit theme. And then we realized that you really don't have to go with a theme that is for your particular product, whatever you're doing. Like, if you're doing a bridal website, you don't have to get a bridal theme. You can get any theme and customize it. So <laughs> we started using the Avada theme, which turns out to be one of the, you know, if you go to Theme Forest, which is where we purchased them all, um, you can look at the most popular, and it's one of the most popular themes. Um, so as we went along, each one of these sites looks a little different but they are all the Avada theme and the capital plan one we got done in two weeks they wanted a real short time frame of course it was another political one so i'm going to show you this is the heroin site nope this is not the heroin site i have to come on baby How do I get that up there? Anybody know why this isn't showing up up there? It's on my screen. Do you use adult screen? No, at home I do. It's an it HP. Could, it could yeah, I guess I'll do the this one. No. Does it function that? Yeah, that could be it. Nope. So. Nope, that one I can. Let's try it in IE. That doesn't show up either. Can you drag it? No. Well, I'm trying to figure out where the function. I thought it was that. Could be a five. Yeah. Should be done with the Microsoft, this and P. P? 
for your screens. Oh yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh wait, I don't want a screen only. Okay, there it's up. I want to duplicate it so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so let me get back to Firefox. Okay. So the heroin site got closed in the meantime. So they wanted a really dark theme because heroin is a dark subject, of course. And so we found this one. It had a it had a light theme, and you know you could select which one you wanted. But it has uh, just information, and that was the theme. It didn't have a it had a, a decent back end, but it wasn't as good as the Avada theme. Um, then, looks like we closed two of them. Then the DPCC Foundation was the next one that we did, and that one was the Mercy theme. So it was, um, it has a lot of things about the donating and, and providing things for them. Well, the, the elements that it provided were easy ways to do the donate now, but as I said, later on we figured out we didn't need to find a theme that was just, it was just that the, a lot of the elements that were donation related and, you know, campaign related um, gave us some easy ways to post campaigns for, for different things, things like that. But you can create that with any theme. So, Generally, what you do is you go and look at the themes and decide whether it has features that you absolutely have to have. But what we found is that most of them you can put in through other means. Giving to Page is our uh, portal for finding uh, volunteer opportunities throughout the county. And this one is in association with our human race, which is kind of an arm of Giving to Page where we raise money for all those organizations. There's all the nonprofits throughout the county can post uh, volunteer opportunities through here, and then the human race. And you can see that we carried some of the colors to get come through, but there is a different, you know, fairly different look. Uh, the animal friends and control they wanted the animals up front and and in your face, so they wanted the slideshow above the navigation and everything else. This again is the Avada theme. It has a lot of features that they wanted, um, and these are the flip boxes. We had, they wanted another slideshow. Um, they wanted animals everywhere because they want people it, to catch people's attention and adopt animals from that uh, site. And then the, the capital improvement plan is where they've, we've posted all our projects throughout the county, and then this is really a communication method with our state and, and uh, U.S. representatives. When, when our board or anybody wants to, them to su support something, they say, well, tell me what projects are in my district. So they can come here and they can say, I'm in District 4, these are 14, these are the projects that are in my... And since we had done, used this similar functionality on a previous site, we got this site up in two weeks and it was very easily done. Live functionality is part of that, of the data. This, yes, the, the, uh, this is a filtering of the, of the things on that page. So that was what we, what we've, those are all the sites that we've done. You can see they don't all have to look like, even though they're diff the same theme, the last four. So some themes provide pretty robust admins. No, I'm not, there we go. Um, this is the Avada theme. All of these break out, and if you click on any of them, they expand to a whole bunch of things that you can set. So you can see that uh, you know, it has a lot of things that you can set. You, know, you can pick a, a header, you can pick a sticky header, you can set the settings for what the sticky header looks like. You know, the colors are largely done in the styling, but they, there's parts of it elsewhere that are done. So we liked the theme. I don't know if we'll always stick with it or if we'll go with something else, but so far it's served us pretty well. So here's an example. When you click on the styling um, 
admin piece. You can set background colors, element colors, all these different elements. And then the background colors, when you click on that, it expands into all these things. So all the different parts of your page, you can set the, the colors and the widths and everything based on uh, just through the admin. You don't have to actually do CSS for that. And Fusion build Builder is how you build pages in Avada. I don't know how easily you can see this. Each row here, you can set up, you know, I want it to go the whole width, I want it to be a third or a half or whatever you want, and then you just drop elements into those pieces. So you can build your page by just dragging and dropping elements into those pieces. So you can see when you um, see these elements here and you go to the page, you'll see the correlation. And also in Fusion Builder, the tagline box is one of the examples that I wanted to show you. It has a bunch of, these are both tagline, tagline boxes on two different sites and you can set how they look just in the backend admin. So here you can see the flip boxes, the element on the, um, Within Fusion Builder, this is where that showed up. And the counter box here, and the counter circle here. So but it's real easy to build a page and move elements around and add them in. Sliders, the same thing. This was a slider further down on the page. You just drag and drop a, a, the revolution slider in and then set it up. You can have multiple sliders or multiple anything on a page. And here's also the recent posts. So th this is the recent post of the categories of news, and it pulls all those news items. These are the posts that are categories events. So you can assign categories to different, different posts and then pull them in just with those elements that you built with. And the Legenda theme, which was the Heroin DuPage site, didn't originally have a visual composer, but it does now. So I thought I'd just give you a screenshot. You can do similar things in that. And I think those are just them adopting those, the, those builders. Anybody can probably do it if they um, purchase it. Now, once you purchase a theme, if they make updates to it, can you get it with it? Usually there's updates um, associated with it. Now, we've had, I've heard recently that the Avada theme is going into some sort of yearly fee. <laughs> that may change what we do if they do that, but generally once you purchase a theme, if there's updates, they'll send it. Most of the updates are associated with, um, with a WordPress update, so sometimes things will break or you know, they can take advantage of new features, so they'll update the theme. Not all of them will. So that's another thing, again, to kind of keep an eye out when you look at themes. You'll be able to tell what version it's of WordPress it's, it's um, compatible with, and you'll be able to see if they keep it up to date. So CSS, um, even though you've got a theme and it's got all the colors, you know, you can pick a lot of things, you still end up doing some custom CSS. So you end up having to know um, CSS to tweak those elements. And we've used a lot of it. Um, and again, a lot of this has to do which, with how powerful your theme is, but we still do it. And also plugins, if you add a plugin to your site, it doesn't always pick up the, th the theme colors or whatever. So we ended up having to, to use CSS for, um, for that. And I thought this was really cute. So, oh, it's going to take a second to get up there. Well, I don't know if it's going to get up there or not. A CS, there's a CSS joke site and it has hashtag Titanic float none. So <laughs> I thought that was cute. So, um, but you can, 
you'll, you'll definitely build your CSS skills as you uh, go along. I lost my mouse. There it is. Yes, you can. You can build, the question was, can you build a decent site without CSS? Especially if you get um, a really strong theme, um, you might not need to use very much um, at all. A lot of that will depend on whether your users, like the animal control, wanted that, um, the slideshow up at the top, we had to use CSS for that, because that wasn't one of the options in the theme. Other themes may have that option. So again, you know, most of those themes, when you go look at them, they'll have little demos and you can see a lot of different, uh, different like some of them will have 20 uh, home pages that you could look at with different styles and you can see what you can do. Widgets are something that are usually set up for footers and sidebars. And um, you can get them that are, you can see here, these all say Avada in front of them. So these came with the theme. Some of them, this came with Constant Contact when we installed the plugin. And then the other ones just come with WordPress. So widgets are another way to, to drag and drop things onto your page. So in this case, we have, I showed you the About Us widget, and it has a revolution slider in it and text. So you can have, drag different elements from over here, over there. You know, there's a Twitter one that you can pull Twitter feeds in, things like that. So um, widgets can be a, a nice way to build elements of your site as well. And again, usually they're used for sidebars or footers. Here's. Uh, no. It's just a, a feature of WordPress. Widgets are a feature of WordPress, and some of, some widgets come along with the with the theme, and some come with other plugins that you might install. So here's our footer for the heroin site. We had in this case there were different layers of footers, and a lot of the WordPress themes have that. So our footer one has a static block that has the sponsored by the Her DuPage Heroin Coalition. And then here are, in this case, what we had to do is build um, a block and put different elements in it. So, Here's a widget sidebar for events. So that's over here. This is an image. And the right-hand side is follow us on Twitter. So depending, again, on the theme, you may have to build these elements in different ways. And usually the, they'll have pretty good support or examples that you can look at. Here's a sidebar example. Animal Control wanted a block here. They actually used a revolution slider for here, and then their tweets. They pull in their, their Twitter feed. So you can see the elements on the left that they used to build that. And plugins, there's a, a lot of plugins for WordPress. Um, a lot of them are free. Probably most of them are free, at least at a basic level. A lot of them have a premium add-on thing that they'd like. And we've done both. We've hit, used free ones and, and then upgraded some of them as we saw fit. And I would review them. The, they all have the number of downloads and then people review how much they like them. So take one, if you look at a plugin and it has two people and they don't like it, or even if they do like it, that might be en not be enough for you to want to use that plugin. So find something that is pretty widely used. So a couple of the plugins that we used are WordFence, and I'll be covering that later on. It's a, it's a security plugin. Uh, and the map of facilities for the heroin to page site, we needed a map, and then we wanted to be able to list different types of heroin uh, assistance places, not places to buy heroin, but <laughs> recovery homes, treatment centers. And so 
we used a, a plug-in and we wanted to be able to categorize what kind of facility it was, whether it was a halfway house, inpatient, residential, and so forth. So that plus the plug-in that we used showed you the whole United States to start with, and we wanted to zoom into our area, and of course that was an upgrade. So look real carefully at those plug-ins to see what would be an upgrade and what wouldn't, and whether or not it would suit your needs. Yes, widgets are something that are like pieces. They're like a, a piece of code that you can put in certain places. A plugin gives you additional functionality. So there's map facilities, there's mapping ones, there's, you know, if you have uh, Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that, there's ones that do like constant contact or something like that you can embed. You download the, the plugin and then you can embed it on your site. Did you ask a question? Yeah, what plugin is that? Um, let me get back to you at the end because I have to log in, I can't remember. I know there's different maps and we picked one and we were down that rabbit hole. <laughs> this was our first WordPress site, so there's probably a better one. Yeah, so. And WooCommerce, we used WooCommerce. It comes with some themes. Um, it's an easy way to do some uh, e-commerce on your site. Um, we wanted the ability, when somebody did a donation, for them to select what they were donating to. So the plugin upgrade gave us that. Otherwise, they could, you could have different. We could have had different things, like say, I want to donate $25 to the general fund, or I want to donate, and you'd pick that and put it in your shopping cart, but we wanted this kind of interface, so. We ended up going with the upgrade, upgraded uh, the premium feature of WooCommerce. WooCommerce is pretty widely used. So, one of the things we found out with the plugins is some of them will grow your database size. And oh, what did I do? Um, Woof, WordFence and WooCommerce we found out didn't clean up things as well as we thought, and. Um, we had a problem with hackers using our plugins against you, and I'll be covering that in the security section. They used backup WordPress and basically backed us out of where we had no good backups. <laughs> so, you know, you will want to watch those things. Here are some of the ones that we found useful. Um, WordFence security, we used uh, uh, WordFence, there's also Security, I think they're one of the ones here, and there was another one I heard of, but we decided on this one, and I think it was recommended to us by somebody. Um, we, we're using the reCAPTCHA integration um, by Yorn Lung, so there's lots of reCAPTCHA ones. This is the one we ended up picking. Site speed, WP Supercache, gives you, it does some caching of your site so it doesn't have to re build your page, you know, on demand. And for a lot of the sites, if it's not a lot of dynamic data, you know, that's good enough. You'll, you know, it's okay to cache your pages. Um, delete expired trans transients is one of the things that helped us control our database size. When we noticed it, we, we ended up, we're hosting in Microsoft Azure and when you create a WordPress site, you get a free database, um, but it's only a 20 meg. And so if you get to tw over 20 meg, we found out that they lock you down. <laughs> so, you know, you want to keep, you'll, you'll need to know those things about your, your hoster, and I talk a little bit about that. And then WP Web Scraper, on the Animal Friends site, we wanted to pull in animals that are on the county's website for the available animals. That's where they maintain what animals are available for adoption. So on various pages, we pull uh, information from those pay from, from the uh, county site. So what WordFence does that we found useful is that it scans your site against the official copies of WordPress themes and plugins. So it will scan it and identify anything that's been cha changed than the official version. So if somebody got into your site and hacked it, 
and there was an extra file, it would find it. It also scans the database for suspicious entries. And it has settings to block or throttle the IP addresses. I'll give, show you some screenshots of this in a little bit. And it can enforce strong passwords, which you know, WordFence in and of itself doesn't do. So you know, this was something we decided after we got hacked that we needed. So we got this, and we also did country blocking. We don't block people from seeing our site, but if you try to come to our site from another country to the admin, you're blocked. So that was one of the features that we, we liked. And I'll explain what would happen to us in a bit. So this shows the, the features. You'll see that some of these say premium feature, and when we purchase the premium feature, you can now check those. But it enables your, a firewall for your site. I just put squares around the ones that we thought were critical. It enables login security, uh, enables automatic scans. That's where it compares the two and then updates it when, it's, uh, when a new release is, is uh, issued. When you launched that site, how soon were you hacked? It was a long time. The question was how long were we hacked after we launched the site? It was the heroin site that was hacked. We launched it in January of 2014, and it was this spring when we were hacked. Now, I don't think it was hacked before then. What ended up happening was, because we were hosted in Azure, they noticed a lot of uh, unusual traffic. Somebody had put a file in our WordPress site to redirect people to a porn site. So all of a sudden, they had people coming there and, and going somewhere else. And they were the ones that notified us. So it was well over a year, but we learned our lesson. <laughs> so, yes? WordFence actually alerted you when you get a mass attack and get an email on the gate that says you have been around. I'm sorry, I can't hear you? I say WordFence will actually alert you every time someone logs in. Right, and that's... A mass attack and you'll see. And that's on the, one of these other screens, I think. Yeah, we, it, it alerts you. These are... We play with these, but mostly this is how we have them set up. When someone logs into the admin site, we have a, a notification go to our webmaster mailbox. And uh, even, if, even if it's a valid user, we, we want to know when somebody logs in. And so we kind of keep an eye on that, yell over the wall, hey, did you just log in? But um, once we got things buttoned down fairly well, we haven't had any problems. And this is one of the reasons. And then here's some of the other settings. And you'll be able to see from the, the slide um, deck that, you know, what, what we did. And again, sometimes we check or uncheck a box just because we're getting too many emails or, you know, or we notice that something should have been checked. Here's the forcing of admins and publishers to use strong passwords. And immediately lock out invalid usernames. What we found out, this is one of the guys that got into our site. <laughs> so, we're, and, and admin and web admin are pretty commonly, we, could, we can actually see the traffic of what, who was trying to log in, and those are two of the ones that they um, frequently use. We don't have an admin, we don't have a web admin. So we uh, block those automatically block the IPs of anybody trying to, do, to get in with that. So it automatically does it. And then here's the country blocking that I mentioned. And if somebody tries to get to the admin site from any countries that are not US, because we don't have anybody outside of DuPage County, they automatically get redirected just to the home page of the website. So um, it's, that's helping too. It's all a bunch of layers for anybody that went to the my site was hacked yesterday. That's what it's all about, adding layers of security. So here's an example of the live traffic. Um, if you turn on live traffic, we only turn it on when we really want to monitor it. But it actually shows you who's trying to log in or what the, where they're coming from. Here's somebody came from Google. What, we have a lot of people coming and finding to see what heroin looks like. Um, so, since it's a public information site, 
we don't want to block anybody, but this tells us who's coming in and where they're coming from, and what they're looking at. And uh, we only do it because the database gets big because it's keeping track of the live traffic. So we do it only when we're, we think we need to investigate anything. You said that 20 megabyte database is standard on all WordPress sites? On, on Microsoft Azure, okay. yeah. And you can upgrade, but it's, then you gotta pay every month. One of the things, re, the, one of the reasons we also went with, with WordPress is none of these people had any budget. <laughs> so we needed something that was relatively free. So, you know, this is a low cost kind of site that you can put up. Um, on here too, if you notice somebody that's suspicious, none of these people are, but you can actually block a network, block an IP, you can actually investigate them a little more just from that screen. Microsoft Azure is the uh, Azure uh, cloud. So they have um, a lot of, it's a hosted, yes. And it's part of our DR plan is to move to Microsoft Azure. We decided to go that way because we have an enterprise agreement. So, yeah, they, uh, there's a lot of decisions made for reasons like that. But uh, you know, you could probably go to GoDaddy or any of those other sites and get it cheaper, but be, because the, then the billing comes directly through our enterprise agreement, it was decided to go this way. Well, I mean, they, the advantage, the question was, was there a reason that why we picked Microsoft Azure? And it was largely because of the enterprise agreement and um, we wanted everything in one place. We knew we were moving towards a hosted solution. So I wasn't the only one involved in that decision. Our infrastructure team was also involved, so. <clears throat> and here's a, a sample of the, the scan. So it's checking, yikes, I'm tripping over everything. It's checking different things, so it's seeing if you're site is being spammertized, if it's generating spam. Down here it's checking the plugins and things on that site. So it's comparing them again against the official version of whatever it is, whether it's WordPress the, or the plugins. And then it tells you whether or not there's problems found. It does tell us as well, it, like if there's an upgrade available for a plugin, it'll say you don't have the latest. It'll tell us, you, you know, there's an upgrade available so you're out of sync with that. We found that when there's an update for WordPress, I don't know how your staging line and stuff is set up, but when you have a plugin update that's not compatible with the current WordPress, it's like in the it, it can, it can ha that can happen. The, qu the comment was that it, if there's upgrades to WordPress and your plugin doesn't necessarily have an up update, you can be out of sync and they don't always work right. I've had that happen too. Well, usually once you go in, for any plugin that you've got, you can go and see what version is available. And if you're finding that they're just not updating it, with versions of WordPress, I'd probably find another plugin because it, that means they're probably not. Most of the plugins that are really popular get updated pretty quickly after, a micro, uh, after WordPress. Um, and, and themes can have the same thing. If you're finding that your theme isn't getting updated and you might have problems. I had a, a site that I did outside of the county and the theme wasn't getting updated and when we updated WordPress, some of the features didn't work anymore. So, you know, those things can happen. And here's where it's telling you that it blocked some IPs. So somebody that was faster than a human got blocked because they were faster than a human. And um, here's the scan detail of how many files and everything that it, it analyzed. And the desired outcome is it didn't find any issues. So, so after it's done all the scanning and everything, you find out there's no issues. Here's an example of 
a plug-in needing an upgrade. If there was something else, like it found an extra file that shouldn't have been there, it would tell you that here too with the big red X. So, or if a file had changed and you knew you hadn't changed it. So um, we felt that that was an important thing because of our hacking. And um, here's an example. We, we had, when it finds something, you can either ignore that issue or you can fix it. And it, you can even say just restore the, whatever the official version is. And down here it shows you, when you click on it, shows you what was different from here. Now in this case, they changed the URL for WebAware for some delete expired transition. This is our other plugin. They changed the URL, so we said, well, we can ignore that for now. And it'll tell you what it's test tested up to. So sometimes it's kind of a red herring, but you can make that determination and act accordingly. And here's some examples of our email alerts. Um, here it is where someone from the heroin site was locked out from signing in because they tried the password recovery and shouldn't have. Here's where I logged into WordPress. We're still sending those to the webmaster. And then here is one that said, this is after the scan is done, it tells you, you know, what kind of issues it might have found or if there were no issues. So we kept, for now, all the email alerts. And if we find they're too much, we can turn those off by the checkboxes. WP reCAPTCHA is another one that we're using for, um, for the reCAPTCHA, um, for the CAPTCHA, for logging in to WordPress and also for forms on our site. Um, this was another thing that we implemented after we were hacked because uh, we just figured it was another um, level of security. So when you, when you download it, of course, you have to get your site key and secret key, and those come from Google. You go to Google, and I've got the address up there. If you wanted to, you register your site, you get a key and a secret key, and you plug it into the settings of the... Uh, and we tried a couple different capture ones. You know, there's the classic capture with the squiggly lines. We didn't want that. We figured, I know it might not be 100% perfect, but this is pretty good. You can even say wh what things you want it on. So you can say, I want it on the login form, I want it on the password recovery form, and then you can pick whether you want the light or the dark color. So once you get that all set up, you get your reCAPTCHA, you can insert it onto any form. So this is like a contact us form and you can insert the reCAPTCHA and it, it does the coding for you. <coughs> and here's three examples. So here's the login page, the password recovery page, and then the contact us page. So this, this is the one where you just check the box and it either just checks it or you get a pop-up of a bunch of images. Has everybody seen that? And it says, click on all the ice cream or something like that. <laughs> so, you know, it's a, another way of doing it than the squiggly lines, which I think we all hate. WP Super Cache is another plugin. We use that for the caching of the site and to speed it up a little bit. So these are the settings. We actually had somebody help us set this up. We had a consultant after we were hacked come in and, and they made some of these recommendations and this was one of them. So the site was running slow and this has helped, or the sites. And there's more settings for that. I only did screenshots for the ones that I thought were pertinent. There's more settings on all of these plugins, but these are the big ones, I thought. And finally on the super cache. That's the last one. WP Web Scraper was where we pulled images off another site. It was the county site, so we could do that without violating any uh, copyright issues. But basically, you have to do either CSS lectures, 
ex-path or reg regex. So depending on where your strengths lie, or if it's all new, you can go to these places and learn about it. But what we ended up doing was uh, we wanted the, to be able to do that in post pages, widgets, and template tags. So one of the examples here is we wanted to, this is the, uh, the uh, CSS selectors. So we entered div, 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 div image because on the county site, that's how you got to the specific images. And there's ways, there's kind of tools to help you with that. And so here's the short code that went on the page that we wanted that in. So it's got div, 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 div image. So when we inserted the short code, this is what it looked like and then it put that image on. And I think Somewhere it tells you how many images. I think that's on the next example. So here's the second example. This is on the home page of the Animal Friends. It's way at the bottom. They wanted animals to go across. So it's not tremendously sophisticated. It picks the first X number of images that it finds. So, you know, sometimes we have more dogs than cats, but it gets the, the images across. And again, this is the div, 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 div image. And so it picked, in this case, it picked seven of them. So it picked some, seven images from that page. And this is the available animal page on the county website. So, you know, you, you, we had to kind of play with this a while before we got the correct images. We had the county seal, all kinds of stuff until we got it nailed down. So it's just scraping the images, you can't say, I want that cat in the If there was some sort of CSS that you could identify it, but that page we've got is dynamically created and it doesn't have anything like that. So if you had an image that had like an ID, you could do that. So. And this is another one, this is the cat, this ends up in one of the, uh, on the, the uh, sidebar. <laughs> so in this case, we, we actually, this is where we picked a specific cat and, uh, or specific animal. So we wanted the first cat or something. And all this is, of course, the dynamically generated image name. So, you know, hopefully you have something easier than that. But that gets the first in a certain grouping. And here it is in the widget, so you can see the widget um, on the right, this is the right content, so you can see there's that, that widget uh, code. And it, we just plunked that short code for that, um, that image in there. Oh, and the thing I didn't mention on this is, this is saying, I, I want the CSS, you're using the CSS ID in this case. So that's what this is telling them. You know, it, it always generates the same thing, so it's a group. That's our group of, of that third group on the page. I think it's the 102, it starts with 100, 102. So 100, 101, and 102, so it's the third group. So here are those examples. On the county website, you can see at the time I did this screenshot, we only had one dog, which is unusual, one puppy and then cats. So it got the one dog, the one puppy, and then however many cats till it got to seven images. We don't very often get down to the bunnies. They're pretty far down, but we always have a lot of cats. I don't know about your animal control in your area. Everybody does. <clears throat> So, what we found is that the transient records in WordPress were never, according to posts I found, they're never deleted. That might have been fixed in a recent WordPress upgrade, I'm not positive, because we haven't had problems with the sizes lately, and I don't know if it's because we installed this or because it's fixed, but uh, that's why we installed the delete expired transients 
So when people come to your site, there's transient records. You know, it's your cookies and things, or not cookies, but it's your, your session variables. And so that ex deletes them out of the database. So we found that the two places that we got a lot of uh, records were WordFence and WooCommerce. And that was one of the reasons we turned off live traffic on WordFence, because it really generated a lot of records. And this is where I mentioned, um, see, Microsoft Azure connects to a lot of vendors, and they don't necessarily control that vendor. So our database is hosted on ClearDB. And ClearDB, when you hit your database size, it locks you out completely. So we couldn't log into our back end. You know, there were a lot of things. People, people couldn't put anything in the shopping cart in the animal control. And so we had to actually upgrade before they'd let us log back in. So find out what your host requirements or limitations are and what they'll do before you uh, get stuck like we did. So WordPress is a target. I think that one of the sessions I was in, somebody said WordPress, Drupal, and Drupal are the two of the most popular uh, CMSs. I think it was the one with fig leaf. And so they are a target. People go after them. Um, we thought, and who's going to even notice our little bitty sites? <laughs> so we didn't worry about security as much. So we didn't have SSL on these sites. Again, we were trying to keep our costs down. We didn't have any security plugins. We didn't have CAPTCHA on the login screens. So we were pretty naive when we went into this. So what we've done is we've fixed at least all those areas. We, in March of 2015, so that was this spring, is when we found out that there was this gallery PHP file added to our site, which was going to the porn, porn uh, site. So that was when we implemented SSL, changed all our user passwords, and restored from a back went backup and implemented WordFence. We thought we caught everything, but in July, we found that um, we had, somebody had gotten into one of the sites and run a whole bunch of backups with our backup WordPress, and basically we didn't have any backup WordPress backups that were good. So we found an unknown user, that was that DP, whatever it was, that one that you saw on the secure, on the um, WordFence site, and they had added a file and had a changed file and uh, was identified as a filesman hack, which apparently is a known vulnerability that somebody constantly gets in. So we ended up having to recreate the sites from scratch and we tightened our notifications from WordFence. That's when we started getting all the emails. So that we, and we changed some of the settings. We must have not had everything checked that we should have checked. So, uh, it's, it can be, a, it's a big panic, and it can be time consuming to fix those issues. So um, I recommend that you implement SSL for your admin logins. Re redirect to HTTPS. So you can do that by putting a redirect into your WP config file, so that if somebody goes to slash WP admin, it'll redirect them to the HTTPS WP admin. They can't get it to it without the HTTPS. And we added capture and recapture, which we hadn't had back in that first hacking incident. And uh, so hopefully that'll stop the robots from, from uh, getting in there. And this is uh, WordFence. We implemented WordFence. But there are other ones out there. Security is another one that's real popular. And there was another one. And regular backup your site. We changed our backup scheme from using the backup WordPress um, plugin because we'd been burned by it. Uh, and we, now we back up using Azure tools that back up to a network drive. So, uh, and you have to monitor your site. We created that heroin site. Other than adding events to the calendar, we hadn't really looked at it. So you do need to understand to keep an eye on it, just to make sure nothing's happening. And don't use things like admin or web admin for logins. So there's a bunch of them. Uh, one of the guys in one of the sessions, there's Google uh, most uh, expected logins, and you'll find you know, the ones that people try the most. Do you have your 
WordPress auto update disabled? Right now we don't. We have it enabled. That was recommended to us by that consultant after we got hacked because WordPress will often have security updates. That's the other reason to monitor your site, to make sure nothing breaks when they do an automatic update. We do get notified when they do, when it updates, and then we go in and check it. So have you had a different experience? Do you have a different recommendation? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That, we did have yes. Oh, okay. He he just said that he, he's there's all these different recommendations that sometimes can conflict with each other. What? On our um, all the sites I do for our county, I leave admin on there, but I put the permission to subscriber, so never got hacked. There's also some other. Don't even put in a big file. Uh, disable your theme editor so it doesn't get active and in with the theme editor and that's all. Like that. Okay, that's good to know. So I'm going to write that down. The theme editor? Yeah, so if you go to Linda, Linda.com, they've got a whole, oh, like four hours long on WordPress security. <laughs> Thanks. So did everybody hear that? Go to lynda.com. They have a four-hour thing on WordPress security, and one of the things is stopping the theme from being updated. That's what you said? Oh, okay. So I'm going to take a look at that. Again, layers of security. That's what the guy yesterday had with the hacking thing, he said, the more layers you add on, the better it is. So if you are hacked, reset all your user and FTP passwords, because we didn't know if he'd gotten in via FTP or via login. Um, the database password as well. And when you update your database password, the, it's in the WP config file. So that way, you, they, if they know your database password, they could get into your database anyway. Um, and then implement those steps that I mentioned. Hopefully you have a good backup or you're gonna have to rebuild your site from scratch. And then ensure your themes and plugins are up to date and current with whatever the WordPress version that they're compatible with. And the WordFence scan, we have it running pretty regularly um, to make sure nothing's been changed on the site or in any of the plugins. And then ensure your backups are running. So we kind of keep an eye on. We thought we'd be able to create these sites, leave them alone, not have to worry about them much, and we found out that that's not true. You do need to still monitor them and treat them just like any other site that you would do. And here's some references that we were found or were given on uh, boning up your WordPress security. In summary, oops, oh, that was, uh, WordPress sites, do allow an easy implementation of a smaller size website. I don't know if I'd do a huge website with it. Um, you know, all of the ones we did were small and containable, and, and, but it was easy to do. And uh, there's thousands of themes available, thousands of plugins. Um, your C CSS, you will need to have some CSS knowledge if you want to do stuff over and above what the theme allows you. And don't set it and forget it, because uh, we got burned that way, and I don't recommend it. <laughs> so are there any questions? What areas are you able to uh, modify the CSS? Uh, the question was, what areas are you able to, to modify? Pretty, pretty much anything where you find, you, you look at the CSS. Usually what we do is, We'll take a look at, at the site, and I use the built-in tools in either Internet Explorer or Firefox, and pick an element and find it, and it'll tell you what element that is, and then it becomes a journey of exploration, trying to get to change that, because it isn't always straightforward. So um, we've found that anything we wanted to change, we haven't done tons of CSS, custom CSS, 
some on the older sites more than the newer sites, or when we were early with the theme, we might have used custom CSS and later on, because there were so many options, we missed one and said, oh, we could have just done this and take out the custom CSS. But I think anything that you've got on a page, you know, if you can find the, it's not showing up again. It went back to extend. Okay. Um, sorry, I thought I was demonstrating and I was just talking. Um, we do, if you do F12 in Firefox or Internet Explorer, you get the CSS down here and you can click on the arrow and go to any element on a page and see what the tags are with that. So if I click on this, you can see the code down here. You can see usually the, uh, any classes that are applied to it. And then over on the right hand side, it shows you the CSS that is applicable. And if I wanted to, I could play with this. See these ones that are crossed out mean they were overridden by something else. So you can actually change things in here and I can make this a size 50 font. It lets me change it or turn it off. Sometimes I can change it and sometimes I can't. Let's see if I can do that. And then you can actually see what would happen with your uh, CSS change. I don't know what I actually changed the font, font, some font somewhere was 50, I changed. But um, pretty much any element on the page, depending on whether or not, you can see this one has a class of menu item, menu item, type post, type menu, menu. So if I pick that one, I have to find, sometimes you can just copy this and then into your custom CSS and change it. But it's, sometimes it's not as straightforward as that. So it does take some experimentation. That's why I said you'll, you'll get really good at CSS, because <laughs> trying to find the path or the exact combination of things uh, or the formatting of the CSS, you know. We're dupageco.org. It's not WordPress. This is. Uh, I think it's going to be, it doesn't have the features that we need. We have a lot of custom code in here. Um, our property portal pulls data from other SQL databases. Um, we've got a lot of custom pieces throughout here. But we're using the Actron CMS and we will probably move off of it. Mm -hmm. But um, this is all .NET so we probably will stick with .NET. Um, so I don't, I, I feel that this is probably too big for WordPress. <laughs> But, uh, so you feel that WordPress has a The question was, do I think that WordPress has limitations? Personally, I think so. Other people might not feel that way. Um, it's, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's got certain features in it. If you look at Drupal, Drupal has a little more features and, you know, it's, it's all relative. But I do think that there's certain uses for WordPress, um, and this is what we thought it was useful for. Um, I know that a lot of the government sites are using Drupal. Um, I don't know many, maybe some of them use WordPress, but the, the real robust sites that you see, like Figleaf, develops in, in Drupal, and uh, so it, I think it's a much more powerful CMS. I think of WordPress as like a mini CMS sort of. And I don't mean to disparage WordPress if anybody's got emotional ties to it, but. <laughs> How do you do updates? Are you doing it straight online and then just public? The question is, how are we doing updates? We've played with staging sites um, in Azure, um, but when you do a staging site in Azure, you end up sharing the database so it can mess up some of your, you know, like when we have to do certain upgrades, we want to clone the site and maybe at least test the um, upgrades because some of them don't work right. So we're still playing with some of that. As far as doing upgrades, sometimes we, we just clone it, do the updates, make sure it works, and then do it to the site. And then some of the minor ones, we just 
play roulette. Do the updates in dev. Yeah. And then override stuff. Yes, we've done that sometimes, override it, or sometimes we just apply them because they're pretty easy to do. Most of the upgrades are just a button push. So um, we don't usually want to, we, we, we have done the staging sites, but then they share a database and then you do the upgrade and then it breaks something on production. It's just a mess. So different hosting solutions might provide different options. But right now, we're still kind of learning on that one, on upgrades. Any other questions? Well, thank you for coming. And uh, have a good rest of your day.